Hey everyone, this is a continuation of the intro of Napoleon Hill's book, The Laws of Success. Uh, this is, we're still in the mastermind over here, so we're going to finish talking about the mastermind, and then you guys are going to be equipped to understand what the book is about and what to expect in coming videos. Okay, so what exactly is the mastermind? Okay, so Napoleon Hill defines this as the mastermind is created by bringing together two or more minds and creating a spirit of total harmony, okay? And very important here that he explicitly states that when harmony is missing, business relationships as well as social relationships will fall apart, okay? So in other words, harmony is the duct tape that holds the wire together. Without harmony, there is no relationship that can even flourish or let alone sustain for even a short period of time with that. So I'm going to give you guys an example, okay? So the business I have, I don't know if I've told you guys, but I have a car detailing business that I co-founded and co-owned with a, uh, a business partner. He's a friend of mine, you could say. And when I first started this company, it was an epic failure for one year. So I actually had to dissolve that company and then restart the company from scratch. So let me tell you what happened, okay? So I had this vision with another man and we talked about this regarding, you know, car detailing, let's do this. He, we, he had some ideas, I had some ideas. And it worked really well at, the, at first because this guy was actually a car detailer for Acura. So he knew his stuff, he was down to do detailing and we wanted to bring mobile car detailing to our town. Now within a couple weeks or so, he was very, very pushy, as per lack of a better word, to get one of his friends on board, okay? So when I inquired more about the friend, he wouldn't take no for an answer of getting him involved. He said, this guy's, you know, an expert in finance. He goes to my school. He's such a cool guy. He's part of, you know, numerous business clubs. He really knows his stuff. And I meet the guy and presentation was completely off, okay? I'm talking like 400 pounds, no personal hygiene, smoke, drank, gambled. He was an absolute waste of a human, but we'll get to that later on how profiling and looks really play into increasing or decreasing one's quality of life. Okay, but that's not part of the video. So he bought this man on board. And then within the first day, I mean, my gut reaction, I didn't like him. And to be honest with you, I still don't know why he bought him on board. But within a week or so of bringing him on board, the whole company went to shits. So we were able to launch the company. We got the business license, started advertising, and he was very lazy, okay? So he made it a uh, rule, actually, that you couldn't contact him during non-business hours. So his words, it was nine to five. We talk Monday to Friday. If there is a concern outside of business hours, you don't message me, which is a recipe for failure in any business, right? Anyone who runs successful business knows if you're an employee, you can clock off at five. If you're an owner or you have a higher role in management, you're unfortunately on 24 seven because any problems or any ideas, any behind the scenes work, you need to be running at all times for a business. And that was our first mistake, but you know, I was pretty stupid. I still believed my friend who I initially started the company with and I didn't really say much, okay? But as time went on, harmony dissolved, okay? The more harmony dissolved, the more volatile our interactions came. So long story short, we can talk about this in a course, literally, it's a pretty long story, but me and him didn't get involved. And then my friend actually, he had allegiance to this other guy who I didn't like. So they kind of were against me as two versus one. And we ended up dissolving the company because it was just not fun to work with, right? It was horrible working. I mean, we we're actually getting sales and doing pretty well. And, I'll talk about more when we do our business and we talk about business with you guys, I'll talk more on that as well. But we ended up dissolving the company and to sum it up, harmony was missing. And as the harmony deteriorated, that's when the more, you know, the more disrespect we had for each other, the more hatred we had to each other and the business fell apart. Even though we were doing actually pretty good in sales, we're actually making profits just wasn't gonna work, right? Because there was unfortunately a beef that had started and that beef kept growing and growing. So that's an example of harmony. What's the definition of harmony, okay? So a situation in which pe people are peaceful and agree with each other 
or when things seem right and suitable together, okay? So if you have, you know, a group of even a hundred people and yeah, they work well together, they're doing a club and you get one jackass in there, he has the ability to disrupt the mechanisms and dynamics of the whole group. He can actually even make it dysfunctional. Now, the only reason why is because he pollutes the harmony, he reduces the amount of harmony and the quality of harmony, and then with the decline of harmony, that becomes a failure of a social or business relationship. So just remember that moving forward. Okay, I want to really hammer that on you guys. Uh, Hill also says power and success are practically synonymous terms. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I can get into it a little bit, but power and success, essentially it makes sense, right? The more successful you are, the more powerful you are, the more powerful you are, the more successful you are. We're going to talk about that a lot in depth. Now, Hill states something very interesting. So he outlines the qualities that's needed for success. And he gives you examples of people who are considered successful and people who are not, okay? So the interesting thing is that he says, if you score zero on any of these things, that's enough to be a failure. However, there's one quality where everyone needs to have 100% on, and that's definitive chief aim, okay? If you watch any business lecture, any read any business book, any business podcast you listen to, they're gonna tell you the exact same thing. The millionaires, the multimillionaires did not give up. They knew what they want, they knew how to get it, and they would not stop until they got it. Whether it was five years or 25 years, they did not rest or stop till they got it, okay? So to be successful, you need 100% definitive chief aim. That might take a little bit of time to establish your definitive chief aim, but to sum it up, it's you know what you want, you know how you'll get it, and you won't stop until you'll get it, okay? So that's definitive chief aim. All successful men need 100% and that, and it makes sense, right? If you ever see someone who wants to go to medical school, you see in first year sciences, hey man, I want to go to medical school. It's like, uh, okay, you know, uh, best luck to you, right? And then you meet them three years later. Oh, hey man, I actually just dropped out to business, right? It wasn't, you know, maybe he did flunk out, but his failures and everything could be chalked up to lack of chief aim, right? He maybe was saying that because his parents told him that, but that wasn't his definitive chief aim. He wasn't eating sleeping, breathing, the thought of getting into medicine, okay? So definitive chief aim, something you want, you know when you want, you know when you'll get it. I want to rehearse that to you because that's extremely important and that's going to be required in all of your ventures moving forward. Okay, so let's actually look at this list, okay? So actionable step here, take a picture of this, I got a couple seconds, and just make sure you screenshot it and actually assess yourself. Okay, so be real with yourself. Don't bullshit, pause it here, screenshot it, and actually calculate your score, okay? So when I did this, I actually had a mean score of 63. I was being pretty hard on myself, but calculate your mean, and then hopefully by the end of this series, after listening to me, after reading the book, you can get your uh, mean up, or average up by 10%, okay? So let's talk about this, all right? So definitive chief aim, we've already talked about, everyone needs 100. And remember, you can't, it doesn't matter whether you're zero to hundred in this right now. The most important thing is that you need a hundred percent your definitive chief aim. If you don't have that right now, take some time to realize it, establish it and live it. That's okay. If you don't have it right now, just make sure you do a lot of thinking and you understand what is it that you want in your life. Okay. Then self-confidence. So in terms of self-confidence, right? It's how confident are you, are you and your abilities to achieve something? By the way, I'm just going to quickly go over these in like a sentence or so because we're going to be analyzing each of these laws in depth, okay? So I'm just going to list them very, very quick. I just, the aim of this is just to get you thinking a little bit of what to expect later on, okay? So I'm not going to explain it too much. I just want you guys to write this list down or you know take a picture of what i showed you and just assess yourself real quick so you have a kind of a pre-test baseline and then after we're doing this hopefully you can have a post result and your results should be higher than what you were at baseline okay habit of saving we've talked about that in the last uh, episode but if you weren't here for that episode all it's saying is that to be successful you gotta save you can't spend more than you make and you can't even spend even if you're going to be successful right you can't even spend like 60 70 percent of what you make you gotta save okay that's gonna 
saving is going to build up your finance finances which can translate to capital and eventually financial freedom initiative leadership okay so to sum it up this one is can you do things and can you do the right things and high order things without being told okay imagination I talked about that in the other one as well right but do you have the power to imagine can you imagine yourself at the end of the day can you imagine yourself in five years ten years the man you want to be if you can't imagine that there's a very good chance you will fail enthusiasm we talked about the dead man so are you a dead man who you just see people on the street and they have no uh, care care for you because you just don't add anything to their life you're boring you're like you know in uh, cities in canada in the winter there's just that brown snow it's it's boring you come outside it's cloudy you're that guy are you a rain cloud or are you a ray of sunshine think about that self-control like the matrix right are you gonna go for that girl in the red dress or are you gonna wait 10 years and make and get a beautiful wife or a one night stand and make the decision there habit of doing more than paid for do you clock off at five and spend the day home or spend the ride home just bitching to your spouse or friends with how much you hate your job or do you forget the timing of the clock and you do a bit more to make the boss's life easy whether that takes one year or 10 years, people notice that, okay? That's very, very important. Pleasing personality. Do you hype people up or are you a leech that just wants to make others feel bad because you're so insecure? Accurate thinking. You need to be perspicacious, okay? So you need to think accurately and you cannot have a skewed perception of yourself in the world. Concentration. Are you concentrating on me or are you looking at your phone or Instagram reels every 10 minutes? Profiting by failure. Is it failure or temporary defeat that would teach you something that you wouldn't have otherwise learned unless it was a temporary failure? Okay, you pick temporary to failure or temporary failure or defeat. Tolerance. So are you a bigot or are you tolerant of others and willing to learn and adopt mindsets held by others that may indeed help you? Practicing the golden rule. If you were hit with everything or every action that you did to someone in the past 20 years, would you be happy or would you be screaming, cowering behind a obstacle, behind a boulder? Would you be hiding in your basement because you wouldn't want anything that you've dished out to other people to come back to you? Golden rule. Cooperation. Can you work well with others to achieve a desired goal?